we're officially 50 days out to the PlayStation 5's launch in North America, and hands-on demos are coming next week. Also, rumors are heating up of original Metal Gear Solid getting a PlayStation 5 exclusive remake, and news on Bethesda's deal with Microsoft and how it will affect future games going to the PlayStation 5. All this and much, much more in today's saltiest PlayStation news report. Let's get into it. What's up, my fellow gamers? It's Saltiest Gaming. We're back with another PlayStation News Report. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5. What's up, Salt Nation around the world? Happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are doing good. We're already at hump day, the midway point of the week. And the last couple weeks, let me tell you, when it comes to gaming news, it's been insane. It seems like every day we're getting bombarded by tons and tons of gaming news, specifically PlayStation news and PlayStation next gen news for the PlayStation 5 and that's what I'm here for so without lollygagging let's get into it there's lots of Metal Gear fans out there I'm not one of them personally but the first Metal Gear launched for the MSX2 in July of 1987 I didn't even know what that was before I did research for the video today Metal Gear Solid first launched for the PlayStation in September of 1998 followed by PC in September of 2000 rumors are abounding they're everywhere and whether there's smoke, there is fire, and there is definite smoke for this rumor. As with every rumor, you need to take it with a hashtag grain of salt. I know you guys hate that term, but I've seen enough news and rumors to kind of think that this is actually going to happen. Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, Substance, and Konami's Collector Series, Castlevania, and Contra were all rated for the PC in Taiwan. The following images were included in each rating. Here's the Metal Gear image, Metal Gear Solid. Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance, and then Konami's Collector Series Castlevania and Contra. According to YouTuber Red Gaming Tech, who is very good at what he does, he's been known to provide some accurate leaks in the past. This is difficult when it comes to the PlayStation side because it is so tight-lipped. Not many leaks come out that are accurate. Still, according to their source, a source that apparently has a 100% track record up to this point, the supposed Metal Gear Solid Revival is a full remake, not just some kind of port or remaster. So it's going to get the full treatment just like games like Final Fantasy 7 Remake or Resident Evil 2. The source also states that Metal Gear Solid 2, 3, and 4 are all being re-released, but it sounds like they're set to be remasters rather than a full remake. It's unclear whether they're coming to the PlayStation 5 as well or whether they'll just be targeting the PC. A remake for Metal Gear Solid, even though I'm not a fan, would be arguably a huge move for PlayStation 5 because there are so many Metal Gear fans out there and it's arguably one of the most synonymous series when it comes to PlayStation and it certainly fits the bill when you consider that Sony dished out serious coin for timed exclusivity on very similar projects namely Final Fantasy 7 remake for that one year exclusive deal but is Konami really going to pump money into crafting a full-blown remake of Metal Gear Solid I don't know it all depends on how much they feel like they can get in return from their investment but without a doubt stranger things have happened the Japanese publisher is somewhat of an enigma they're not really doing much these days to my knowledge they're making more slot machines than they are focusing on video games so it is what it is but we shall see let me know if you're a fan of the metal gear series and would you be super excited for a remake of the original game or any of these games let's talk about it in the comments next up we have news of the deal between microsoft and bethesda i mentioned this in my previous video but more news is coming out and according to recent reports bethesda will run semi independently under microsoft Head of Microsoft Xbox's X-Man, Phil Spencer, confirmed that Bethesda will continue to run the way they were before the acquisition. He spoke to CNET and Spencer made it clear that Bethesda games will adopt some of Xbox's practices, including launching day one into Game Pass and becoming fully playable and streamable. The company will retain some of the autonomy that resulted into some of the biggest games of all time. He said this, it's all about the culture of these teams. Spencer explained they're not about becoming us. Pete Hines kind of further reinforced this idea when he spoke on the situation. He said this, we're still working on the same games we were yesterday made by the same studios we've worked with for years and those games will be published by us. The implications are huge when it comes to games like Elder Scrolls, Starfield, the list goes on. But I mentioned this multiple times, Phil Spencer has come out and spoke against 
exclusives. Instead, it was actually anti-gamer and anti what they're about. They're about putting everything on every platform. So I don't see them locking down any of these titles for the most part. The thing I do see them doing is getting this on Game Pass day and day. And then if they want to, you know, put it on the PlayStation 5 games like Elder Scrolls, etc., etc. If they need to charge more, they will. $70, for example. And if you ask hardcore Xbox people, they seem fine with that. That's like their new go-to phrase. We'll be playing this on Xbox Game Pass for $10 while you guys pay $70. I mean, I, I don't know. I still am going to be playing this on my PlayStation 5. I'll still be playing Doom. I'll still be playing Wolfenstein and Elder Scrolls. The list goes on and on. So they need to make their money back. It's $7.5 billion. That's a lot of coin. And we can look no further than the acquisition of Mojang for $2 billion or whatever it is, which is about a third of what they spent on Bethesda. And what did they do with Minecraft? They actually put it on more platforms. You can play Minecraft in VR on the PSVR. There's support now. So obviously they didn't take that off the platform. They didn't cancel support. They actually extended the support. So I see this going on and happening with the PlayStation 5. Even if it didn't happen though, it wouldn't change people's thought processes when it comes to the PlayStation 5. They still have the best developers. Push Square recently ran a poll on their website regarding the Bethesda acquisition by Microsoft and whether it would change PlayStation gamers' plans for next generation. And the results were as follows. A overwhelming majority said, I'm never going to buy an Xbox Series X. I'm just going to buy a PlayStation 5 at 53%. So overall, I don't think it's swaying anybody to change what they're planning on doing. I think this is going to be a slaughter, like I've said in multiple videos, three to one sales wise. And honestly, new projections are coming out, which is crazy. Analysts are saying now that the PlayStation 5 sales may surpass 200 million. Takashi Mokuzuki tweeted about this and he talked about a Japanese analyst. Rakauten Securities believes the system just might be Sony's most successful of all time. According to the firm, the console could sell 200 million units in its lifetime. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think all these Bethesda titles will remain exclusives on the Xbox platform or is it going to just be status quo? They'll be released everywhere like Xbox seems to be doing with other titles like Ori in the Blind Forest, Mojang's Minecraft. The list goes on and on. Let's talk about it. Next up, news has come out about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And according to a recent report from Ubisoft, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which releases on November 10th, the Xbox Series X's release date, will not only run in 4K on the PlayStation 5, but also at 60 frames per second. Before you ask, yes, that is full 4K resolution. It is not checkerboarded 4K. Many of the fake tech experts on the Xbox YouTube side would have told you that the Xbox Series X power advantage would have provided only the Series X to be able to run on a game at 4K 60 frames per second and the PlayStation 5 would have been an impossibility, but surprise, surprise, 4K 60 is coming for this game. I'm not sold on this game by any means. It's probably going to be a wait for me, honestly. I wait and see to see what kind of reviews come down for this game, but it is good news out there for Assassin's Creed fans. Those that are going to pick this up should be happy. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys going to pick up Assassin's Creed Valhalla Day 1? Speaking of next-gen games, $70 prices on next-gen games won't hurt sell. According to analysts, there have been numerous reports on multiple games that their prices are going to be increased to $70 US, the price of top and AAA games. One of the PlayStation games that have been announced to be that price on the PlayStation 5 platform is the Demon Souls remake. So it's increased by $10 from the $60 standard that's been that way since forever. I can't remember when it wasn't that price. MPD analyst Matt Piscatella says that gamers will pay $70 if not happily due to the demand for next gen games. Piscatella broached the subject on Virtual Economy podcast last weekend. Game prices have stayed the same since 2005 when Call of Duty 2 first went to $59.99 on the 360. We basically stayed there ever since, he explained. Now a lot of people will say rise in base prices for higher tier premium games is needed to offset development costs, inflation, or whatever. And all those arguments seem to fall flat. But what doesn't fall flat is that for some of these premium games, if the $10 increase was implemented, people would be happy to pay it. I think it all comes down to value, value proposition. When it comes to any product that consumers buy, if they see value in it, it doesn't matter what the price is. And that holds true with games. I feel like if you provide value for the customer, they will pay the $70 price tag. Now, if you look on the Xbox side, the reason why they had to create a subscription service like Xbox Game Pass is because they did not have the value to warrant even a $60 price tag because they were putting out games like ReCore and Crackdown 3. The list goes on and on. So they created this subscription service where where you pay a subscription price and you get all these games. So that's what provides value as opposed to a singular game.
game. Now, a lot of Xbox guys are using this as ammunition in the console war because they're saying, oh, I pay $10 a month and you pay $70 for these next gen games. Ha 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 ha. It is what it is. I want to know what you guys think about $70 price tags on games. Are you guys going to pay the price or are you going to skip next gen altogether? Let's talk about it. Like I said in the teaser, PlayStation 5 hands on videos will be shared next week. So in the next few days, select Japanese content creators will be able to try out upcoming PlayStation 5 consoles and share their experiences in new YouTube videos. If you guys are living under a rock, Xbox Series X's are being passed out like candy. YouTube creators and content creators all over the internet are showing off their Xbox Series X's, so get prepared for that. Today, Sony and Interactive Entertainment confirmed on the official PlayStation blog that they will take part in the YouTube Gaming Week. Popular Japanese content creators will be able to try out the console in the next few days and will be allowed to share their thoughts in new videos. Available October 4th, Sony has also confirmed there are plans to let more YouTube content creators go hands-on with PlayStation 5 in coming weeks. You can get a full schedule of the YouTube Gaming Week in the description. I'll put it there. It should have games like Miles Morales, Spider-Man, Demon Souls, anything that was shown off and that's going to be a launch game, you can expect to get videos on that. That's cool, man. It's going to be good to see these consoles in real life and get some firsthand experiences from these content creators and kind of go through them and get some more information on Sony's next gen console. What would you guys like to see from these Japanese content creators when they get the PlayStation 5? Let's talk about it in the comments. That's it for today's edition of the Saltiest PlayStation News Report. If you are new, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon for future notifications. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe, play good games, not flops, and as always, stay salty, my friends.